I know I've seen Sager play jungle a lot. Uh, and, and the reason why I'm talking about who's playing jungle is because in the draft mode right now, one of the most important things is to have a really solid jungle. In fact, actually, we're right in the draft mode right now. We can get into the game and see exactly what's going on. Uh, we do see that Flash was actually the first ban here um, from Templar's Gaming Reckless. What do you think of that? Um, it's very understandable. Flash is the type of character that can control... Uh, the flow of a match almost single-handedly. He can split push, he can get in and out of team fights, deal a lot of damage very easily. Um, so it's something I guess TGW just didn't want to deal with, so they got rid of it. Yeah, uh, it makes a lot of sense, and I think one of the things Flash struggled with the most prior to the most recent patch is that uh, the, it was so easy to push him out of lane and, and basically make it so he couldn't farm, but with the new drone aggro introduced in, he can be close enough to at least get experience. Right, he, he can yeah. stand in the middle there, and if someone tries to poke him down, they're going to be taking the drone aggro, which kind of plays in his favor. Look at this. So, Crashy is going to be jungling, and I just instantly, I mean, with Crashy, I just automatically assume he's always going Doomsday if he can go Doomsday. But in the latest, uh, latest patch, were some changes to Doomsday, and it looks like he'll be jungling Gaslight Joker. He's had a couple changes of his own. This is going to be... I mean, already we're seeing such radically different picks and bans than we did before the patch. I mean, Mecha Wonder Woman, we're not seeing her, where she was almost always instantly banned. Uh, we're, in fact, seeing Aquaman, who we obviously didn't see before because, well, he didn't exist before. <laughs> right, actually all three characters, it looks like, are going to be the new characters are going to be in this match. Yeah, that's. Uh, we'll see if Mecha Superman will make it in. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, uh, the four most recent champions, Aquaman, Green Arrow, Mecha, uh, Mecha Superman, and Star Sapphire. We have three of those being picked already. Uh, as to though going Green Arrow, he almost always goes Marksman, but he's picking Green Arrow over the other three Marksmen, which haven't even been picked yet. So right. clearly they think he's maybe the strongest strongest champion there. Yeah, I, I actually have no idea how to predict how this game's going to go because the patch has changed so much. And I, I, I guess that's one of the reasons why we can get the, these pro, pro games to kind of see how, how things play out like that. Right. Um, it's interesting to see Atomic Poison Ivy and Zatanna. I'm not sure. Maybe Atomic Poison Ivy might be running top lane and Zatanna supporting or mid. They might be leaving themselves open so they can counter pick. Yeah. I, you know, with their team, Bros pretty much always plays a controller helping out a marksman in the bottom lane. Of the last, like, probably the last eight, eight games I've seen Vex play. Bros has always been a controller of some sort. Really prefers actually Tom Poison Ivy. And it works really well with someone like a Marksman, in this case Green Arrow, if they both run bot lane because, you know, if she can stop someone from running away, Green Arrow can just wail on them. Uh, and, you know, Fatal Uno, I've seen Fatal Uno carry games with Satana. I'm thinking he'll be mid lane. Then Asylum Kanata, with the new changes to Batman, we're actually going to see him. And he's got teleport. And one thing that I often overlook, but the pro teams have pretty much all been doing, their top lane champions have all been getting teleport. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's interesting. Right, they want to get back to lane quicker in terms of farming. They want to be able to split push and help their team team fight in case something uh, happens at yeah. a moment's notice. And another thing is these pro teams always get so many uh, cameras around that, you know, even if, if let's say... Pixie's up in the top lane, and all of a sudden, uh, Vax is pushing to, uh, Templar's gaming really hard in the bottom lane. She can teleport behind him in a camera, and all right. of a sudden that can change the whole fight around if you can. If you have a lot of cameras around, this gives you so many options for teleport. So, uh, I mean, I, I am kind of predicting we will see Catwoman in the top lane, but I, I think with teleport, that's the intention. Probably, probably start. You know, this is interesting, actually. Templar gaming reckless. Uh, it's hard to tell who's going to be their two bottom lane champions. Are they going to run Aquaman in a uh, mixed lane? Well, he has teleport too. It's actually very interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure how the lanes are going to go, but both teams have Green Arrow's um, camera as well as Robin's camera. It's a lot of cameras. And then Zatanna on Vex also has Gaslight Batman's camera. So you're seeing three different types of cameras, and I guess they value each one of them in a different way. Robin uh, gets more charges. Um, Gaslight Batman's has more vision range, and Green Arrows actually gives you true sight to see stealth champions or other the other team's cameras and take them out really quickly for a short duration. Yeah, I, I really like that true sight because... Um 
often you you can see them putting out cameras or you know where they have a camera there but x-ray vision uh you know you can use it once every so often whereas right. you have three charges of cameras you actually don't even place them early you just use your your surveillance camera and then you just place them every time you find your opponent's cameras and it kind of it, it, instead of just getting your own camera it basically takes rid of theirs and, and, and places your own at the same time let's see they're all pushing out here no no team doing anything crazy mass invade here as far as items go uh, are you seeing kind of the starting items that you'd expect to see um, yeah, it looks like the uh, the mask on both Star Sapphire and Atomic Poison Ivy, they want that lane sustained with the Metasys passive. Um, Gaslight Joker, obviously jungling with the Marauder Shield and the knife. I'm, I'm really curious to see Gaslight Joker uh, jungle because, I mean, Crashy is, is pretty much all jungle all the time. That's what he does. And I've seen him jungle pretty much every single champion out there, but... You know, I, I'm more used to the traditional Doomsday, Nightmare Batman, or maybe Atomic Green Lantern, or, or even Wonder Woman. With Gaslight Joker, what's your, uh, what are the clear times on him? How does he really uh, clear camps very quickly? Um, he does clear quickly. He also gets um, very easy sustain. If you can keep his passive rolling and kind of chain kill the smaller minions and into the larger creature. Um, it keeps his passive going so he can sustain over time and of get the most out of it. His, uh, what his passive does is anytime he, he gets a last hit on a unit or picks up a coin, it just regenerates a little bit of his life. So okay. it's a, a great a great way to sustain yourself. Although I, I, have a, I have a hard time thinking anyone is more scary jungler than Nightmare Batman just because mm -hmm. uh, you know he has the lifesteal. But more importantly, once he gets level 6, his ganks are just vicious at that point. Right. Well, we got mid lane's gonna be gas cap versus a ton. That should be an interesting thing. who I'd really favor there. Um, I'd give the early to Zatanna, but then once Gas Cat has a little damage, I think she's a little scarier coming out of stealth. Yeah, especially if, if Zatanna gets a low, she can get the speed boost from the stealth. And get a couple basic attacks. Now we also have Aquaman up against Batman and now Batman wasn't actually uh, chosen too often before the patch, so he's a relatively relatively newer champion to, to, to pro-level play on Gotham Divided. And Aquaman, of course, is super new, so I have zero knowledge of, of how, how this lane trading is, is going to go here. Yeah, um, one thing I noticed that Aquaman did is he took his trident first, and one thing I, I like to do against other melee characters is actually take his W, which is the targeted stun to get some easier trades, so I think he's going to be punished a little bit and pushed into his tower. Yeah, it seems like he kind of just has to hang back and poke, but uh, as long as Asylum Kanada just keeps a drone between himself and Aquaman, if they're further away and that try to get really dangerous on a throw, right. he shouldn't take too much damage from that. Now, at the bottom lane, wow, we do have Vex pushing in really aggressively using that, that combination Bros and S of the O. They're really good buddies in this bottom lane. Uh, oh, look at that That ultimate being used by SCO. Of course, Green Arrow, one of the new champions, he can get his ultimate at level 1. And uh, it can be it can be pretty scary if you're really good at using it. And SCO is an like, expert at using Marksman. Right. Green Arrow, definitely one of the more mechanically dependent champions. But he definitely uh, has the reward if you're able to use his abilities efficiently. Oh, he's just continually picking at, at Pixie and Sager there. Uh, Pixie does have a nice poke with the whip strike, and, and Sager, of course, can, can dish out damage using Star Sapphire's abilities. But uh, other than that, they're just going to be. They have to be careful because they have maybe really good poke, but if they get locked down by bros, you know, Green Arrow has just really good, uh, consistent damage. Right. Atomic Poison Ivy is just pushing, bullying the meta lane right now with their uh, wall and her targeted route. Looks like here's Crashy going for that top EMP. So I'm cannot give him the assist, and that, that's you know one of the one of the things I've, I've played a couple games with Crashy that he does early is he'll instantly say, "All right, if we're winning this lane, let's go grab the EMP," and I, I expect him to, you know, continue doing that as he's been very successful so far. You can see they actually have a tier two EMP unlocked already by being very proactive uh, and grabbing both the EMPs in, in both lanes. But here comes Diver. Bros is very low. Uh, oh, Diver goes down though. I, I, Pixie wasn't really in the right position to, to assist her teammate there. And Sager is way too low. 
And um, that's got to be the worst feeling when you go for a gank and it's three on two and he's still trade party. Right. It looked like uh, his team wasn't on the same page. Uh, Star Sapphire was a little low and uh, didn't look like she wanted to commit to it. And he sort of committed and still went and didn't really get the backup that he needed. I mean, his, his name is Diver. It's true. So, I mean, can't really blame him, right, if he wants to dive in there and try to do what he can. Uh, Agent X is, is, is faring, you know, pretty fine against Fatal Uno. It's, it's roughly even if you look at credits there. Uh, Agent X at 1,400, Fatal Uno at uh, 200 ahead. So, having a little bit of a lead, but not uh, not too ridiculous. Right. I think uh, Zatanna pushed him out of lane a little. In the beginning, he had to go back, and um, Nightmare Batman had to cover his lane, but... As the game goes on, I think Gascat is going to become more and more scary. Looks like Sager is healed up and is back in the action. Uh, but I think it's been about last two minutes of gameplay. I don't think Sager and Pixie have left their turret. And in, in one end, you can say, well, that's why is that bad? And the turret still hasn't taken too much damage. Well, this advantage is every time a turret kills drones, you, you get a greatly reduced amount of credit. So. I, ideally, you're not really fighting under your turret, maybe right in front of it so you're safe, but you don't want to be stuck underneath it. Right, it basically forces the, the team to last hit, um, and if they don't, they, like you said, yeah. they get that huge uh, credit And it, it can be really hard because sometimes the turret just will do so much damage that it'll just kill the drones before they even get into last at range of your champion. Let's see, pushing up here, we do have uh, Agent X. Must have taken another beating from Fatal Uno, forced back again, and you know, Vex has, over the last several weeks, they've just, I think they've shown a lot of improvement and are continue, continuing to impress this game. Just absolutely bullying every single lane. They're already ahead by 1,500 credits, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's only six and a half minutes in the game. That's a pretty big deal for how early we are still in this game. Right. I mean, if oh, they keep Sager. it up, it's up. Nice use of bonds of love there. Ooh, Sager just barely gets away out of that ultimate. Pixie's going in. Oof. No, I'm very close. Yeah, green, I mean, SEO with Green Arrow is just wailing on these two champions, and they're not really able to land their trades in return. I, I feel like I haven't seen Pixie being able to utilize the Whip Strike at, at a constant rate, which is kind of what you need to do if you want to trade well. Right, you see Star Sapphire using her bond, and she's not uh, using the double cast. She's using the Siphon to just do the damage over time and get the most out of it because they're in no position to... Yeah, I mean, you, on even if you stun him, what, what are you going to do, right? Right, exactly. Uh, so he's trying to maximize damage. Look at that crashing going ham. This is that this eight second EMP drop. This turret is, is almost surely going to go down. They might actually get a kill on Sager. Yes, yeah, Sager goes down, and Pixie has to retreat. And I th actually, I don't know if they'll get this turret. Not with Diver there. Well, what do you think? Uh, no, it looks like it's going to stay up for at least a wave or two. But I don't know if Diver can actually defend this. I mean, Green Arrow can just keep picking at it, right? Yeah. And, and oh, there's the ultimate again. Just constantly just r chucking arrows at him. It's like a, it's like he's got a machine gun for a bow right there. It's a very short cooldown. It looks like Nightmare Batman is going to keep this alive until his teammates get back, which is no, actually surprising. But meanwhile, surprising. Crashy secures another EMP, and he, he's probably going to... He, Crashy always knows these timings. He knows that top EMP is going to come up. He's probably going to come back, heal, clear one or two camps, and then help us out because not to secure the top EMP. If you want to make plays early, I think you either have to rely on your opponents making a mistake, but the level of play we have here that that's not too likely, or you have to secure the EMPs. So we saw a big move there a couple, you know, uh, half a minute ago. That was because Cratchy had that eight second EMP drop, and now it's all from securing those drops early on in the game. Very, very important. Right, and he just picked up another one, so he's going to be able to go to another lane or yep. come back to the bottom lane and secure the tower. He's going back. Now here's the question. Is he going to pick up the single EMP, or is he going to wait? to try to charge it up to double. Okay, he's laughing. He's <laughs> laughing like a crazed fat man. Uh, and I think that means he's going up to the top to grab the second EMP. And his timing is so good. Look at this. It's going to come up in 10 seconds. So it's, he'll be there like three seconds after it comes up. Uh-oh. Uh Pixie going in on bros, but maybe went a little bit too deep. No, she should be a get back fine. Uh, meanwhile, uh, sorry, I, I did miss the action as uh, SCO was taken out there. I was too busy listening to the uh, Cast Light Joker laugh. So we are seeing some counterplay now uh, from Templar's game. As they were able to grab a kill, I think it was, it was Pixie who got that kill and almost got a kill on Bros as well. I, it was Diver's ultimate that really secured the kill most likely. Right. The Nightmare Batman uh, out of stealth 
It's very strong. Yeah, it's, I mean, because you get the damage from the stealth field, and of course you get the damage from the ultimate, and then they can't move, so your teammates wail on them as well. Now, is Crash going to go straight back to pick up double EMP, or is he going to... No, he'd probably clear a couple more camps. Yeah, I think you finished the jungle here. Yeah. Fatal Lunar has continued to, to dish out damage. Now, uh, if we look at credits, Fatal Uno is leading by a significant margin. There's no one... Uh, actually, sorry, Asylum cannot as close as well, as close as well, being on, on a solo lane, along with Fatal Uno. Fatal Uno was able to get the one kill, though, putting him just a little bit ahead. Ooh, combo lands. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Agent X. That's, that's painful. It'll be fun to see uh, in the mid game. Hopefully, you get the uh, Nightmare Batman, Gaslight Catwoman, Stealth ganks in tandem. That actually, that's a good point. They have they have both that on the same side. If if they're not too far behind that point, that could be really right. strong. Now, SCO and Bros, they they did get pushed back, uh, but they're right back in the action, pushing like crashies here. No EMP on him, but uh, he does have a giant ham. I don't think they need it with a tower that low. And yeah. Templar's game is just gonna give up that turret. Oh, Fatal Uno. Fatal Uno went a little bit bold there. Got hit by I think it was a double ultimate from uh, Agent X. Of course, Gaslight Catwoman has an ultimate where she just uh, closes as a gap closer and, and deals a good bit of damage. But if you oh, Asylum Kanata, they thought they had him two versus one, but he's the Batman. Odds don't matter. Not in that Arkham White skin. Or costume, excuse me. A very handsome guy. Uh, but yes, I was saying about Gaslight Catwoman. Uh, if she applies her sharpened claws to the target and then launches her ultimate on them, it actually makes the ultimate only have a cooldown of 0.5 seconds. So uh, if you overextend against Gas Cat, you can definitely be punished. Exactly. Um, as this game goes on, I'm going to be more and more scared for Zatanna if she wants to push her tower down. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you have to be really quick at using the bunny. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. She she her, she does have the logos, and Zatanna with the logos is a very scary, uh, can be very scary because I, I'm pretty sure she's got that fully charged by now. Uh, I, I think. It's, uh, how do you think about that as a as a mid lane item for uh, a power damage mid laner? The logos, I think, is a very good item. Um, it kind of gives you that will sustain that she needs to be able to spam her abilities and land the combo. It looks like every, if she can land her combo, she's getting about 30% uh, of Gas Cat's health, so that's pretty scary. Yeah, three of those, and then you're just a couple scratches away from taking him out, but there's the one ultimate. Gets rabbited, landed combo, and what a great death screen by Gas Cat. She does go down. I think it was a little bit bold, because she had to know that, that uh, Fatal Uno had the uh, the the ultimate up and can just bunny her. Right, um, and it was actually a nice play by Zatanna by using her E first and then using her bunny and then finishing off with the Q. You get yeah. the uh, armor rend on the ultimate too for the secure. Well, Gas Cat will be a little unhappy at how that one went, but she'll be back in the action soon enough already. Resharpening her claws and heading back down the middle lane. You know what, we've got Crashy. This is the double EMP drop, so whenever he wants to make a play, that's a big play. Definitely can muscle down another turret. Meanwhile, actually, might not even need it for this turret. Fatal Uno takes a couple of shots. Wow, that... Oh, it's because the punish went off. That's why Fatal Uno got kind of tricked by that tower aggro there, went back in, but the uh, the punish had just damaged Catwoman, and so the, the tower re-aggroed back on Satana. Looks like Vex took the Raider about a minute or two ago and they yeah. place the surveillance in their own jungle. Yeah, this this is a spot a lot of players like to put it. The first raider, it's like, why not, you know, play it in a safer location. Put it in their jungle this early on. Odds are they're gonna find it. Right, you use it to kind of take over map control, make sure you're not getting counter jungle, and then you kind of advance as the game goes on. Asylum Kanata has been a great job of kind of dodging these tridents and then coming in and trading using the martial arts. And as, as Aquaman, I don't know, it's, it's like you said, maybe you need to stun to get good trades because there's not much else going on in the gauge, but it seems like it's pretty hard to land those tridents. Yeah, um, if Batman has nice positioning, um, those tridents are going to be near impossible to hit on a consistent basis. SDO almost went down there. If, uh, if Bros did not use his ultimate there for that extra power armor, I think Star Sapphire would have torn him apart, but as is, 
Uh, they escape with, with no losses, and it's actually Diver is the only one who, who went down in that engagement. Of course, the Nightbat, usually one of the first ones to die for the team, as he's often the initiator going in there with the ultimate. Well, they're just going to pull back. I think they realize they have a lot of hurt and damage champions. Rather play it safe than uh, than than risk getting getting beat down. Right. Take your credits and go back to base and keep going at it. It's actually surprising. Uh, Atomic Poison Ivy has three kills. Yeah. I uh, I mean I I don't think it was intentional. It's kind of just coincidence. It was we're probably most intended for S to the O, but you never know who's really gonna get that last hit for sure. Uh oh, Sam kind of could be in trouble. It's Nightmare Batman on Batman Classic Action, but Nightmare Batman a little bit apprehensive. I mean, Asylum Kanade, I mean, he's got 50, he's, he's, actually, is he, yeah, he's the most credit-filled champion in the game right now. Yeah, a lot of respect uh, from Nightmare Batman there on Batman Prime. He had, had his uh, Feral Embrace ready to go and didn't want to use it in the 2v1. Yeah, uh, and that's, is that in your mind questionable? Um... Me personally, I think we, they would have been able to kill him. Yeah. Um, but if it turned around and he got a kill out of it, I think that would have been almost detrimental to the to the lane. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and also, I mean, he does have the the fragment of, of Mogo he's been building up, so uh, he's a little bit tougher to kill with, with an attack damage champion like Nightbat than than you might think, just because he has so much attack armor built up on his champion. Right, it's a good item, especially because three of their the champions on the other team will be dealing attack damage, and uh, only Star Sapphire and it looks like Aquaman is building power damage, so we'll only have to worry about them. It also is going to mean that you know if you look at the enemy roster, Star Sapphire is going to be the only champion really kind of wailing at the team from a great distance. Aquaman can poke. Oh, hold that thought. Agent X gets rooted by Bros, turned to a bunny, and. That that combo from Zatanna is just brutal. Yeah. Uh -oh. look like, oh. Fatal Luna, be careful. Diver's on you, and that's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's gonna be, oh no, look at that invulnerability in the stun. Fatal Luna's gonna get away, and Sager goes in for the kill. He goes ham, but instead he eats a ham. <laughs> One more. Not gonna quite get it, they're actually just gonna refocus on Diver. He's gonna try to skid that all out of there. Oh, can he? It's looking dicey. There's another root. And that's going to be the kill. And Bruce uh, getting uh, another kill there. Actually, no, that was SCO secured that kill. That was almost a kill steal. <laughs> that was actually a very nice play by Zatanna. She sort of baited Gascat into thinking she can push her to her tower and then take her out because she's so uh, such low HP. And then they turned it into a gank and actually more kills and not even a death for her with less than 200 health. Yeah, I mean, e even if she did die, I think they would have been happy uh, with, with, with the trade that happened. But having her not die, kind of icing on the cake there. Um, Faye Luno is going to go in on, on Blackcraft. Look at the, those snares. And, uh, I mean, uh, Atomic Poison Ivy has pretty much, uh, she's got a root, she's got a slow. <laughs> she's got almost every single way to interrupt your movement you can think of. And when you've got uh, that Zatanna chasing, that's pretty scary. And that's, I mean, I wonder what the power damage of Zatanna is. I mean, it's got to be scary. Now she's got Book of Eternity. 50 power damage from that. Um, uh, this yeah. has got to be 65 power damage because it's got to be fully charged. So that's like 110 and then another 40 with, with all the power penetration given from the book and, and the Cosmic Belt. It's looking like a pretty brutal champion right now. Yeah, it was really nice um, seeing them layer their crowd control and not just kind of spending it all at once. The uh, the root from Atomic Poison Ivy followed up by the slow and then the bunny. Not everything at once. So there's nothing wasted. Yeah, if you do it all once and then they can get away, then they, they get away. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, the Vex, Vex gaming extremely coordinated in, in their team fights. You can tell they're, they're well versed in working with each other. And they're still posturing all over the middle here. Do you think Batman can make anything happen in his top lane against Gascat? I think he can, but I think he's also playing pretty safe. He knows that he has the lead. He doesn't want to press it too much and give up that lead, so he's just going to kind of take it into the mid game and farm up, it looks like. Yeah, there's really... He can't really fight her underneath the turret. Right. And he's on his own, and so... And she can't come out and fight him, so he's just going to basically get to farm and deny her as much, you know, experience and credits as possible. But now, look at this. Bros is coming up. Are they going to dive her? 
Well, he has the MP on uh Oh, you're right, Crashy Joker. does. There's a teleport coming in, but will that be enough? We also have uh, Nightbat sharking around, but now there's almost the entire team just missing Green Arrow. There goes the EMP, and they're going in deep here. Oh, Not even going for the tower, they just want a team fight. Yeah, they do, but uh, Star Sapphire had a great ultimate, a great bonds of love. Now the tower's back up, and it may have gone in a little bit too much. It did take out Gas Cap, but they're going to be cleaned up. There's uh, there's a Tana down, there's uh, Gas Eye Joker down. Uh, Batman takes out his Nightmare counterpart, but goes down as well. Now, can Bros get away from... Oh, use the... There we go. Wow, judging that just at the right moment to uh, to turn on to slow, but still just barely missing the kill. That was three for two. That was a pretty good fight for TGW. Looked yeah. like Vex got a little greedy. They absolutely did. I mean, TGW is definitely uh, still sniffing behind this game. Just moves like that to get them back into it. Now, Green Arrow is just mercilessly dominating this lane. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what... Catwoman is just really expected to do when she's out leveled that much by Green Arrow. I mean, two levels behind, and of course he he's got uh, over six thousand credits, whereas Pixie the Catwoman doesn't even have four thousand yet. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's the ultimate. Oh, dodges out of the way. Nicely done. Yeah, she can't even stay in his range. She basically has to tumble and stun him and trade damage and run away. You can tell she wants to whip strike him, but if she goes to do it, and oh, another ultimate goes off, hits her. That was with the super foam arrow, so it wasn't quite as damaging. Yeah, there's it looks like a scrum up top. There yeah. definitely is. I think they're battling over potentially an EMP crash. He did go down as well as Sager. Uh, I don't know who's more happy about that one. I mean, I, I mean, I guess if you can trade one for one, as Templar is giving reckless, you got to be happy because you are uh, currently losing in the game. Nightbat does escape. Meanwhile, oh, Agent X. I think that's like the fourth time I've seen Gas Cat get mold in a large part due to Zatanna's spell combo with the, the punish followed by the skewer. It's just being brutal this game. You know what? You know what's a really cool thing about the patch? Uh, Zatanna always has had the ability when she puts punish on someone to detonate that for an AoE damage with Skewer. With the new patch, she now has the ability to AoE heal her allies if she puts protection on someone, right. she can detonate that with the Skewer. Uh, I'm not sure how much we'll see that being used, but it's a, it's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, it makes it good for sieging turrets with her team. Keep everyone healed up over time. Kind of poke down the turret and fall back and heal up and do it over and over again. Rose is being annoying, harassing around here. There, you know, I, I like how Vex kind of comes in, peels off a turret, then approaches from a different angle. It's, you know, they're really kind of uh, taking apart Templar's gaming by pieces. They're not trying to swallow the entire team whole or, or get, you know, too overcommitted here. All right, it looks like they're going to swing down to Raider. Yeah, they're really on top of all these. I mean, the Raider just came up literally uh, a few seconds ago, really on top of all these objectives. Now, they may want to try to knock out uh, some of these champions down here. Pixie's going to be gone. Oh, Nightbat pulls a juke, and he, he gets away. Well, does he? It looks like he might, actually. I think he still has his uh, savagery up, so he'll be able to... Oh, there it is. Oh, but they know exactly where he is. He, <laughs> I mean, with, with that savagery up, like he said, though, he runs so fast. You're going to say, you know what, let's just go and grab the raider. And there's absolutely nothing they can do to stop us, even if they know exactly what's going on. What they can do, though, is they can get, let you know Aquaman get some solo farm, which... I mean, he's got to be happy with considering he's been just being wailed on by Batman the whole game. It's a very impressive jungle control from Vex. <laughs> yeah, they've got... They've got vision everywhere. Let's see if this I can actually make this thing work without it going too crazy on me. Um, here we go. Um, so, pretend you can't see the blue champions and you can kind of figure out exactly... Yeah, you can figure out exactly what vision uh, the red team has. It says so much vision across the map here. Um, well, it shows the blue one as well, but uh, you can kind of get the idea of what it would be um, if, if we if we had that. Uh, we do have Zatanna and Gas Joker kind of heading down here. And did they just grab the EMP? It just popped up and they just grabbed it instantly, huh? <laughs> I, I'm pretty the sure they it did. It looks like Gas Joker is going to chase yeah. these two down bottom. Yeah, if there's one guy who's going to go ham, it's going to be Gas Joker. He doesn't even care. Oh, there's a teleport coming in as well. And Zatanna. 
Oh, oh, Pixie in bunny form. Oh, great ultimate by Star Sapphire. That was, I mean, that, that's exactly one of, the, one of the great ways he's all, but Zatanna speeds up Crashy. Uh, poor Pixie, does she have her ultimate up? She does not have her ultimate up. Oh, the hand misses. She, she wants to give it to the turret because she knew that there was no way out of that, right? Where's she gonna run? Right. All right, so that was actually really smart. She knew that enough time had passed that were in which she hadn't taken any damage from any enemy champions, in which that if she died now, she would give the kill to the turret. Right, she gives the execute and no one gets the credit for it. Yeah. It's rather smart. That's, you know, I don't know if I've seen that move before. Uh, I mean, the, the number of times you can actually do that and it makes sense just because there is, was it, 10 to 15 seconds? Yeah, it's probably about 10 seconds. I yeah, believe. so it's, it's, it's hard to really ever make that actually work, but that was one situation where it was valid. <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Aquaman realized how many uh, Vex players were there. No, he's like, I'm using my ultimate. One version, he has three different ultimates. I'm going to use one version of my ultimate to just charge in there. And then he ran into three of them. Crashy pops the MP. Uh, the last mid tower before the dampener goes down. See, they had their minion wave there. I would have saved the EMP for the dampener right here. Yeah, I don't think they needed it. They might have been scared of, like, Nightbat doing an ultimate or something. That's true. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, this is yeah. This this is gonna be hard to push him with that ultimate. But <laughs> pre narrow SEO is just uh, being able to collect a, a good set of items and his range damage is so high. And that, I'm sorry. If, if if you can sit back there as Green Arrow and just wail on people yep. without having to worry about kiting, that's when he's really happiest. That's the. Uh Armor pen version of his W goes through everything instead of popping onto the first uh, target. Oh, now he's he's switching over to super foam arrows. Yep. I, I like how the visual lets you know what arrows he's on. It's if it's blue, it's super foam. If it's yellow, you you saw that earlier using the ultimate with the uh, with the ballistic version of the arrows, and then he also has a thermite version that that looks orangish reddish. Right. And. Uh, Oh, every single one of them can be used in conjunction with the ultimate, and, it, and the ultimate, you know, can go. The ultimate always goes through drones. Um, it usually stops at the first hero unless it's the ballistic version. Right. Uh, and it just, you know, it does a lot of damage. <laughs> we do have a s another EMP. Yeah. Here's here's a question: Has Templar's gaming reckless gotten a single EMP this entire game? I do not believe so. Yeah, I, I don't think. I, I know they definitely haven't used one, and they don't have one on their stick. I, I think. Just the the presence of mind to get every single objective and so consistently get them is really impressive here uh, from from Vex. And it, it's really it really just shows you know I, I, at the start I was like well Nightbat is is such a you know like historically over the last about month of of, of, of pro level play on Gotham Divided Nightbat and Doomsday have been like well those are the guys you want in the jungle. But, you know, the patch has changed a lot of champions. And Crashy's showing that, you know what, Gas Joker, he jungles well. He jungles really well because he's had just total control over all those objectives. Right. Uh, Joke, Gaslight Joker's sustain has always been good. It, it was his ultimate cost that I think was lowered in the oh, latest patch. it was. You're right. So. And actually, his, his Q got, I think his, his Fetid Cleaver uh, can do a little more damage based on his max health as well, I think. Uh, whereas before, it only healed based on max health. Right. So th those are two little small, small little advancements uh, that that are allowing Crashy to be super, super effective. Well, he probably would have been really effective even without those. Nice little moves there. Pixie pops the ultimate, and you know it, it's one thing where Catwoman's ultimate it, it gives her a bunch of stat bonuses and stuff as well. But really, the the biggest thing that it does for Catwoman is it turns her acrobat skill to having a cooldown of of one second. So right. she can spam Acrobat like a Maniac, and Acrobat actually does damage if she, if she hits people with it. And you can use it to become insanely fast and escape anything, but you do feel kind of bad if you have to pop your ultimate just to get away. Right, and one nice thing is she, you don't have to choose to... Um... Did they just kill the Raider again? No, I think it... Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bros no, has yeah. it. That's, Bros that's has surveillance it on. camera. You dropped where... it somewhere. Yeah, let's see exactly where. Maybe it was up here. Yeah, I don't think they had that one. That one's a pretty pole placement, but they already have everywhere else, right? They got the whole map, and they just grabbed another EMP at the bottom there. So we do have uh, Crashy. With, Crashy loves EMPs. He's always carrying one around, mm -hmm. it seems like. And they got another backup one back at base. Vex has a 
rather large gold lead. I expect them to group and <laughs> just kind of siege. You're right. I hadn't even noticed that. I mean, I, I knew early on it was it was they had it, and it's just continued to to grow. Twenty thousand. Asylum cannot versus Agent X. Can Agent X get away? Oh, the slow from from the Q. Now another Q is applied. Another basic attack. He's chaining his skills really well here. Also slowing with Lobo's chain. That's oh, why she was chain slowed. Yeah, you, yeah, did, did, uh, I didn't even, or no, it doesn't quite have level 4 level chain yet. Oh, no, that's not what it was. Yeah, it was actually, what it was is it seemed like it did because in the latest patch, it actually buffed it slow. Right. So it seemed like it was it was stronger than it used to be, and it's because it was. You know, we, we didn't see too much play with, with Batman, so we decided, let's make it slow just a little bit better. I think it's um, flat for all levels rather than scaling. Yeah, it's just, it just starts at 50%, right. so you know, level 1. A uh, little bit of sieging here done. I think they're waiting for their drones to catch up before they went really drop the EMP. But what's really good about what they did is them sieging, they they forced Sager to use his ultimate. And the Star Sapphire ultimate is one of uh, Templar Templar's gaming Reckless' strongest assets right now because it's, it's just such a powerful presence in a team fight. And now that they've used that and she won't have the ultimate, now they can drop the EMP and probably have a really good exchange. All right, they don't even have the EMP in dive the tower or go for a team fight because Batman is just split pushing on its own with no Oh you're right. With no one to stop him, so he can teleport in at any time if uh, TGW wants to engage or they're just gonna give him this tower for free, it looks like. Yeah, next next drone wave. Um, they're kind of just spreading around. They definitely want that tower. Someone's teleported in there, but they no, can they canceled it. Yeah, I think that's smart because yeah. he's been caught off from multiple angles. Now oh diver gets caught off guard, he gets ham, goes invisible and escapes, but uh, he did lose some life. And what they're doing is they're just cutting the rest of, of Templar's Gaming off. And now they're going pretty hardcore into the turret. Diver uses the ultimate. Can he get Fatal Uno if he can? Oh, Fatal Uno is so low. But does get away. And, and, oh, man. That's got to feel bad. They, they really wanted that kill. Weren't able to get it. Uh, Crash, he did go down mostly to the turret and, and using his own ultimate. But uh, it, it's still a three for one. Yeah, it looked like he was tanking it versus Satana. And he died yeah. because of it. I mean, that's... it's it's it's. It, Probably the right call because Atana would have died so fast because she's squishy right. that it's not like she could have really tanked the tower for someone else. She would have died and it still would have gone after someone else. And oh, they're going to get this top damper now. Pixie was pushing this bottom lane pretty hard. Decided to back away and change her mind. Saying, you know what? If we're going to win, I need to get... We, we need to make something happen. Um, and it, trusting the rest of the team, they can defend with, with the power core turrets. Although... Wait. I don't think they, they still haven't used the EMP yet, have they? Oh, Crashy died. Crashy though. died with it. I'm yeah. not sure if he got it off or not. Yeah, he died with it. Oh, nice ultimate from Sager. Almost takes out out S to the O's green arrow. Pixie just continuing to kind of uh, do her thing with Catwoman. Yeah, trying to get some global credits for her team. But the Predator is just relentless with those <laughs> yeah. auto attacks. Uh, it's you know, the Predator. If Sager had more will there. And it could have been using the other abilities along with the the uh, predator in its manifested form. That would have been absolutely brutal. Now Pixie should be at a kite away from Gas Joker pretty well, but he has a lot of move speed. Uh, he, he's got some additional bonus from the Kryptonian Warmer, 30 move speed from that. Plus, uh, Gas Joker has one of the higher base move speeds just by default. Right, and he also gains move speed if he uses his spell shield at the right time and yes. pops someone's ability. And if if his ultimate is on you. It slows you, so right. that that is uh, he, has, he has a lot of ways to stick on champions. Even though he doesn't have, uh, I mean, he has a fear, but he doesn't have a direct stun or a direct right, like root a or, poison heavy. Yeah, he doesn't have nearly your ability to lock someone down, but uh, he, he he still has his own ways that he can control the map. Yep, and as you pointed out before, Catwoman had to use her ultimate to, just to get away rather than for a team fight, which I'm sure it'll be up in time, but. We'll find out. He's got a minute on that, and yeah. Vex Gimme may not give them a minute. They're trying to. I bet Crashy has. He doesn't have. He has a health drop, not an EMP drop. Crashy. Is he going to grab that giant EMP? Yeah, it's the double. He's <laughs> looking like it. It's a bat fight. Night Bat on Bat Prime, but uh, Night Bat is also getting wailed on by Green Arrow. Ooh, nice ultimate there. Oh, teleport in top. He kind of left Green Arrow out to dry here, but he's up. Oh, I thought he was going to lifesteal enough and live, but he doesn't get away. No, there was too many from Templars giving Reckless. They finally get uh, another kill there. But, you know, even though Vex was outnumbered at the start, they're able to turn us around. Can they get... Bat Prime does go down. 
Pixie does go down as well. Meanwhile, we'd have Fatal Uno just pushing like crazy on the bottom. Should be able to just clear up these drones. And right. That was four for two as Zatanna is just pushing the dampener down bottom and Atomic Poison Ivy is getting the Raider. Oh, yeah. So they're actually all three of them are, are, are doing very good objectives. It's hard to stop, right? We got the dampener. We got the top lane push. We got the Raider. And oh no, the, the power core with only two pushing, they're gonna grab one of the power core turrets. They're gonna probably just refocus this, do as much damage as they can, and then get out. Once the rest of the gaming. Oh, you're right, he does. I, I I like him saving it though. Yeah. Because right there, the turret wasn't even a threat. It was all the champions, you know, uh, coming true. back in the game. And he's they're just gonna back up, wait for their team to get back. Now, are they gonna go for the Leviathan, or are they just gonna go to to close out the game? I don't really think they have to. They could. Um, <laughs> nice close-up shot of the, the hand. Yeah. I the like his wings, skin. too. Very nice. Um, the Leviathan is a risk, and I think they're far enough ahead where if they win a team fight and they're there, they could take it, but they don't have to pressure it if they don't want to. They can kind of just siege and take the last turret and onto the power core. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no dampers, so the other lanes will push themselves uh, pretty quickly. When's the next damper coming back up? Oh, not for a quite a long time. In fact, it's not even on the timeline yet. Next thing on the timeline is uh, it's the speed the speed destroyer. One of the camps coming back in, and then EMPs. It's still not even on the timeline. That's a long time to have zero dampeners. I mean, th this just mean they can't leave their base, basically. Basically, they. I mean, they had to fight off the the super drones over and over again. It looks like they're gonna get three waves of super drones to push with them. I don't see this ending ending any other way besides Vex taking it right now. Yeah, and Bros just comes and takes first couple tower shots. Doesn't even care. There's the EMP There's drop. The EMP. Tower goes on instantly. Nice uh, Star Sapphire ultimate, but uh, Vex Gaming is, is just so strong right now. They do focus down Fatal Uno almost. Oh, finally, the Mistress of Magic goes down. Sager's getting wailed on, though. And, I mean, w was it worth it? <laughs> I think so. They I think so. They, 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 they went down, but they got a kill doing it. Right, and... TGW was doing the right thing. They tried to get on top of Green Arrow, but because of his mobility, they weren't able to do it, and the rest of his team was able to peel. That's, that was just, I think, a a classic example of a team that's just been in such top form lately, uh, which is Vex Gaming, and their, their control over the objectives of the map. The fact that, like we said earlier, they got every single EMP the yep. entire game. Using those objectives really well, they got every single raider. Uh, they were just 100% on top of their game from from you know point from from start to finish. Right, and like you said, they had that 2,500 uh, credit lead in the beginning, and they kind of just steamrolled it into the mid to late game and just grew their lead more and more. Yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty dominant game, I think you could say. Uh, I'm, I like looking at the items that they're getting because you can see here there's some similarities. They had three champions built on a tankier side with Batman, Atomic Poison Knight. Well, Batman, it, it kind of went hybrid, right? Um, they got a lot of Fragment of Mogos, and that gives you you know some good damage as well. Uh, but it also is nice because it, uh, it gives you health, attack armor. We had a lot of resilience items here for, uh, for Crashy. Power armor, three different Rashal Ghouls robes. So, uh, a lot of very tough to kill champions. And then they had Fatal Uno and S to the O just had so much damage behind that layer of, of crowd control and, and, and controller type champions. Right, and uh, Fatal Uno also had the Fatality's Energy Lens, which just amplifies her damage and the damage that they take after it's activated. Yeah, it's basically the same thing as as uh, Deathstroke's Claymore, but for right. power damage. Exactly. Was, uh, De Deathstroke's Claymore is for the attack damage, and we saw that being used here uh, by S to the O with the Terminate ability, which is uh, the equivalent in for attack damage item as as the Energy Blast from Fatality's Energy Lance. Um, but uh, yeah, that's 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 Vex Gaming is gonna uh, win that one. They're gonna advance in the bracket to play in the semifinals.